They'd be performing Horror and Here's a Who by Dr. Seuss. On the 15th of May in the jungle of Noel, in the heat of the day and the cold of the pond, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton, the elephant, heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint, yep, as if some tiny person were calling for. Help! I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He, he looked and looked. looked. He could see nothing there, but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that was able to yell. So you know what I think? I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some sort of creature of very small size. Too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched out his great trunk in the air. And he lifted the dust speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Hop! Humped a voice. It was a sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Hop! Two. That speck is as small as the head of a pin. Why a person on that, there has never been. Believe me, said Horton. I'll tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen, and I hear them quite clearly. Now there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely, there's two, even three, even four. Quite likely a family for all that we know. A family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said. said. As a favor for me, try not to disturb them. Just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blind fool in the jungle of Noel. And the kangaroo jumped in the cool of the bull. Pull. What a terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. He lifted the dust pick and hustled away. Through the jungle high treetops and the, the news, news quickly, quickly spread. spread. He talks to, to a dust bed. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. And Horton walked, worrying, worrying, almost an hour. Should I put the speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I won't, I can't put it down, and I won't after all. A person's a person, no matter how small. Then Horton stopped. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, Horton said. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all the folks on this dust speck, no end. You saved all our houses, our ceilings, and floors. You saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, Horton yes. gasped. You have buildings there, too? Oh, yes, piped a voice. You most certainly do. I know I'm too small to be seen, but I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you, we seem terribly small. But to us, who aren't that big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who, and we who draw grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. Don't worry, you're safe now. I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, two, two big jungle, jungle monkeys, monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers kept shouting. What rot! This elephant's talking to who's who are not. There aren't any who's. And they don't have a mate. <laughs> and we're going to stop all this nonsense. So there. They snatched towards Clover. They carried it off to a black bottom eagle named Vlad Vladikov. He was mighty strong. Of uh, very swift wing. And they said, Will, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant even could speak, that eagle flew off with the flower in his beak. And that late afternoon and far into the night, that bird. The black bottom bird flapped his wings fast in flight. While Horton? While Horton chased after him with groans over stones that tired my toenails and battered my bones. So he begged. Please don't harm all my little folks who have as much right to live as us bigger folks. And over, the eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder called back. Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. Not hide this tomorrow, we'll, you'll never find it. And at 6.56 the next morning he did it. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let the small clover drop somewhere inside of a patch of great clovers. A hundred miles wide! Find that, said the bird. But I think you will fail. And he left with the flip of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, cried Gordon. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my small friends on that small speck of dust. Clover by clover, by clover, with care, he picked up and searched them and called, Are you there? But clover by clover, by clover, he found that the one that he sought for was just not around. 
and by noon poor old Horton, more, more dead, dead than, than alive, alive, had picked, searched, and piled up nine thousand and five. <coughs> then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, <coughs> till he found them at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried Horton, tell me, do tell, are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on this bed came the voice of the mayor. We really had trouble, much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chairs smashed. Our bicycle tires blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayor. Will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered. Of course I will stick. I will stick by you who's through thin and through thick. Huh. For almost two days, you run wild, insisted on chatter with persons who've never existed. Such carrying on in our peaceable jungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsense and old game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. With the help of the Wickersham brothers, and dozens of Wickersham uncles and cousins, you're going to be roped, and you're going to be caged. And as for you, Speck, ha, that we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of beetle nut oil. Boil it? gasped Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor! Horton paused. You've got to prove now that you really are there. Oh, call a big meeting. Get every who out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. If you don't, every who down in Whoville is going to end up in a beetle nut stew. Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west. But everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping. But it wasn't enough, all this ruckus and war. He needed to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. But just as he, but just as he thought he was getting nowhere and about to give up in despair, he discovered one shirker hidden away in Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J. A very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing, and, and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound. Not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed in and grabbed the young twerp. He climbed with the light of the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is our town's darkest hour. The time for all who have, who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every sound counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When he got to the top, he cle the lad cleared his throat and he shouted, Yip! That one yop, that small, extra yop. Put it over. Finally, Finally at, at last. last. From down on that speck. On the clover. On the clover. They rang out clear and clean, and the elephant smiled. Do you see? Do you see what I mean? They are persons, no matter how small. And their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true. Yes, how true. Said the mother kangaroo. And from now on, do you know what I'm planning to do? I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. From sun in the summer and rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them, no matter how smallish.